Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. This is Sherry Elise of Sharing with Sherry. And who's hanging out with me today? It is Friday. My name is Sherry, as I said, and I am a life inspirer, an author, a motivational speaker, and the co-founder of thewellnessuniverse.com. And today we're going to be talking about loving yourself back to life. And what the heck does that mean? Loving yourself back to life. I have a feeling that a lot of people have felt somewhat, have come to a point in your life where sometimes you feel not so alive, where you feel a little bit maybe dead. Good morning, Diana. She caught me live and so did Chrissy. Hey, guys. Um, so I know that we've all gotten to this place in our lives, most people, which is really, really, really important to say good morning, everybody. Yay, it's so excited to say hello. Good morning, Francine. Good morning, Jessica. Hello, Robin. Oh my gosh, my tribe. Hi, Diana. Hi, Chrissy. Today's a good day. Hello, Suzanne. Hi, everybody. Is everybody feeling good today? Let me know what's happening in your world. Hi, Kelly. So today I wanted to talk about loving yourself back to life. And the reason why this is the topic today, good morning, Sarah. The reason why this is the topic today is because every single one of us has gone through something in our lives which, which has made us feel not so alive, um, which has made us feel probably at some point in our lives that there's a part of us that feels almost dead. And it's scary to think about that. And I remember being in the moment of feeling and honestly not feeling where I never thought that I would be the same again, where I thought that I was completely numb to life, where I thought that I would never be able to trust somebody again, or that whatever it was that I was going through that circumstance alone made me feel like I should never try that particular thing again. And there's only been some experiences in my life that have really helped me out. And the number one thing that I did, and this is for you, Chrissy, she asked me to do this, and this is the first thing that I learned how to do when I realized that I wasn't feeling again. Just breathe. I can't believe all. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> that, was, that was my singing debut. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, that was really the, one of the first things that I did was stop and breathe because I felt like I had stopped breathing. I remember one morning waking up and finding myself on my carpet in a fetal position, sobbing, guttural sounds coming from me because I wasn't sure of how I was gonna take my next breath. I wasn't sure how I was gonna get through the next day. And the first thing that I wanna tell you guys is that every single one of us has gone through this. Somebody somewhere is going through what you're going through right this very moment or will go through it and everybody has come out the other side. What makes the difference of traveling through those moments is your mindset as how you go through it. Because none of us, as I've said a million times, are immune. None of us are immune to life and the circumstances that happen. Oh, look at all this cool stuff happening behind me. That's my lamp. <laughs> That's the wrong way. That's pretty cool. Now I know why my cats go crazy. They literally like jump at walls and I'm like, what is going on with these nut jobs? And then I realize they're these little diamond reflections. Happy Friday, a little caffeine for you. For me, um, I already forgot what I was saying, but Finding out about that place within you that has to remember, thank you, Suzanne, I'm a little dorky. Um, finding that place within you again that feels that it needs to breathe. That place within you that knows and can walk through that moment knowing that you will move through it, but it all depends. Yes, happy Friday, Jody. Um, all depends on the kind of journey that you wanna take. Do you wanna take the long and winding road around? Do you want to take the more challenging road? Do you want to keep making decisions that you know are not the best decisions, but they feel in that moment easier? Because how often do we hold on to people and things and moments and circumstances and grip them so hard because we're afraid 
of what life will be like without that person or without that job or without that circumstances. We have so many fears that run through us. And so even though life, as we imagine, could be better without those things, we're afraid of the unknown. And so we hold so tight. And what happens over time is that we end up deadening. No worries, Tracy. Happy, come welcome. We end up, our, our insides kind of die or feel like they die. And so then we find our plate, ourselves in that space that feels not alive. And I want to challenge you guys that all you have to do is love yourself back to life. There is nobody else or nothing else that's going to do it except you. And it's possibly because I've watched myself do it. I started placing boundaries for myself and sticking to those boundaries. Because what I found when I was mistreated and abused and all of these things that happened to me, what I realized is that I, I was my biggest victimizer. Albert, I'm 40, I'll be 43. <laughs> that was a random question, but in July, I'll be 43. Um, thank you, Becky. But I was the biggest victimizer for myself. So I would place all these boundaries and tell people, these are my boundaries. And yet when people would try to cross them, I'd let them. And so really, who was the one hurting me, the person testing it or me allowing those things to happen? So in order for me to love myself back to life, I had to start setting boundaries. And then I had to discover, I had to learn to discover who I was without all the expectations of everybody else. And part of the book that I'm writing that Diana is helping me with and giving me her opinion, thank you, Diana, um, is really about how I learned. Thank you, Suzanne. I did a mask last night. Diana says, I don't look 43, almost 43. I did this, this is completely random, so I apologize. <laughs> my mind goes all over the place. I did a mask, I never do masks. I never really do, I wash my face and that's like it and I put lotion on. But I did this black tea mask, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be all posh and it was from London and someone had given it to me and oh my God, as soon as I put it on, it stunk to high heaven and my cat was walking around like, and I'm like, it's okay, Hershey, you can come lay. And he's like, and he sleeps with me every night. Nope, not last night. I and John, my boyfriend, he was like, are you going to like wash that off? I was like, no, I've got to sleep with it all night long. And so I woke up this morning going, yeah, my skin looks exactly the same. Not so firm. <laughs> but anyway, random story. So where were we at, guys? We were at, um, oh, yes, rediscovering who you are. So part of the book that I'm writing is about my journey that I took to Italy. And this three month solo, solo journey. And I mean solo, like it sounds like amazing, right? You go off to a foreign country and I drink wine and eat a lot of cheeses and meats, which I did and it was amazing, but it was really lonely. But what I ended up finding out about myself and discovering about myself was that when I showed up somewhere where nobody expected me to be a certain way and I didn't have those expectations of myself, I suddenly found myself finding new things and being new people not being new people, but discovering new things about myself that I never knew and that I gave myself the freedom to be. So if you are looking to love yourself back to life, give yourself that freedom, give yourself the space to be able to discover who you really are without what other people think of you and even without, without what you think of yourself and who you should be. Because I was always super outgoing and it seems like it, right? But when I showed up in this country, I suddenly found myself retreating and just watching more. And I never saw myself as that person. But what I'm encouraging you to do is to step outside what you think you are and what others and find out the things that you love. Start breathing again. Start seeking again. Start allowing yourself to be who you are without what everybody else needs in the world. Because when you can go on that treasure hunt, you're going to find the most beautiful things about yourself. And it's those little moments, it's those little things that makes you feel like you're breathing again. And you're like, oh, I am here. This is me. And little by little, you're going to notice in time that you are going to feel like you're breathing again. And no matter what hurts you end up going through, you end up finding your grounding and your footing and your centering. And you know 
that no matter what comes your, it's okay, Suzanne, I'm watching your spell and it's all good. Um, no matter what comes your way in your journey, that you can love yourself through it. So while you may have hurtful things in your life happen, while you might lose a parent or a child, which makes me super sad, um, a relationship. You know, I've lost a lot of those. And what we hold on to is the idea, especially in relationships, of how things could have been and how we expected them to be and how we wished them to be. And we don't often look at the truth and the reality of it. We just look at what we were hoping for. And so there are so many ways that you can learn to love yourself back to life, but it starts with breathing. It starts with setting boundaries for yourself. It begins with going on a treasure hunt of who you really, really, really are. And it's about releasing your grip on the things that no longer serve you. Cheryl's asking me, without being able to travel solo, how would you separate from others' opinions? Well, I don't think that, Cheryl, that it was the traveling solo that did that. What that was, I mean, that's how I discovered that I was doing that. But for me, it really was about realizing that people in my life are not always going to be with me all the time. And that the only one that I had to end up pleasing was myself. Because I spent many years, Cheryl, trying to be what other people wanted me to be. I've told this story a million times, but I was really into this guy and he was vegetarian. And like, <laughs> I was like, yep, yep, me too. And for almost a year, all I wanted was a Big Mac. <laughs> and at the end of it, things didn't end up working out with each other. I don't eat Big Macs anymore, by the way. This was many years ago when they I didn't realize they could kill you. Um, sorry, McDonald's. But I realized that no matter what I did and who I showed up for for somebody else, that at the end of the day, they weren't ever going to like me. They were going to like the person that I was presenting myself to be. And then I didn't respect myself. I didn't respect that person I saw in the mirror that I was pretending and trying to be. And so no matter who I was, there was somebody out there that wasn't going to like me. And so releasing myself of being tied and imprisoned by what other people thought of me was the most freeing thing and the most freeing thing that you can do. Because as I always say, you're gonna have to wake up with yourself every day. You're gonna have to look at yourself in the mirror. That person that might be judging you, first of all is judging you because they're busy judging themselves. And whatever it is that makes them feel better is why they're doing that because they can't hold their own. They haven't been taught to, and not because they're terrible people, but because nobody ever loved them unconditionally enough. Nobody ever told them how amazing they were, just as they are. And so they come to have those same expectations of others. And when you can stand in your truth and say, hey, this is me. I don't sing so great. I make terrible jokes. I sometimes do not take the good care of myself health-wise. I sometimes am lazy or a procrastinator, but these are all the things about who I am and who you are, whatever that is. When you can learn to accept that and love it, then you just get tired. You get tired of worrying about what the whole world thinks of you. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. So I'm clapping. So with that said, thank you, Chrissy. I love you guys, um, and, I, and I genuinely wish the best for you, and I, as I always say, like, I do not have all the answers. I'm just someone who shows up every day for myself and says, what do you need today, Sherry? What are you feeling today? Yesterday, my boyfriend came home, and he was like, how was your day? And I'm like, I don't know. I was like, there were some good moments and some moments that were just harder, but in those harder moments, what I did was, what can make that better for you? And then the other moment, I was like, all right, you just feel what you feel. It'll pass. So that's what you do. You allow yourself to feel. And you forgive yourself for the times that you aren't as strong as you can be. But you give yourself your love. You give yourself the things that you need. And you remember to... Oh, wrong part of the song. Just... Thank you guys so, so much for being with me here today. If you want to sign up for my email newsletter list, I will post it in the comments. Um, 
I'm working on my book. I hope you guys will support it. I'm looking to go speaking all over the world. My dream is to travel and to stand on stages and to stand in your living room and to hug you and to just make you know that you are enough no matter what it is that you're going through. No matter what it is, you're beautiful. And anything that you face, you will get through. And so will I. Have a beautiful weekend. I love you. If this video, this message has inspired you in some way, share it with somebody else and help inspire them. We all have enough in our own lives to go through. We might as well hold each other up and help one another. Love it. Have a beautiful Friday and weekend. I'll talk to you guys all soon. Like an hourglass, you to the table. Is everybody going to sing with me so I don't do this alone? If you're in your house, sing, sing. Guys, here we go. Just Bye, guys. I love you. Just